<clears throat> so our uh, next uh, inverse the transform technique is uh, convolution method there are four methods as i already mentioned so let us see the third one uh, to find inverse the transform convolution method here we are going to use uh, a convolution property to find the inverse z transform uh, to find the inverse z transform we are discussing about convolution method to find inverse z transform what is the statement of a convolution theorem actually if x1 of n z transform is x1 of z and uh, x2 of n z transform is uh, x2 of z uh, uh, then uh, convolution property states that a linear convolution uh, states that x1 of n linearly convolved with x2 of n then it's a z transform is x1 of z into x2 of z so how do we how can we use this theorem to find inverse z transform means whatever given z domain function is there it is going to be split as a two functions okay after converting it into two uh, multiplication of two functions uh, individual inverse transform pairs we need to identify after that x of z inverse transform x of n is going to be if you apply inverse z transform on both the sides over this it is nothing but x1 of n convolution x2 of n okay so anyhow we will be having all these uh, these two pairs right just you need to substitute here k equal to minus infinity to infinity x1 of k into x2 of n minus k okay that's it so like this we are going to use convolution method uh, to find inverse z transform let us see with one example now how to use this so write the problem find the inverse z transform find inverse z transform uh, of the function x of z equal to z square by z minus 2 into z minus 3 using convolution using convolution method using convolution method okay so here roc is not mentioned means by default we take all the sequences as causal sequence so let us uh, try to write x of z as a uh, individual two functions two z domain functions okay so here this you take it as this is this as x1 of z into x2 of z okay x of z so depending on our requirement as well as depending on the convenience whether the given function easily splitted or not using partial fraction or whether it is divided into two sub functions or it is better to go for a partial uh, power series expansion like that we can analyze if method name is specified means definitely we have to go for that particular method only if it is not mentioned means depending on the given function which is uh, e easy to implement like that we can identify now what is x1 of n a power n into u of n because a power n into u of n what is the z transform we have z by z minus a where mod z greater than a or y. So here also I am taking mod z as greater than 2 because it is not mentioned there. So by default, I'll select it as a causal sequence. If it is mentioned means select that particular causal or anti-causal like that. Z by z minus 3 and I'll take here also causal greater than 3. Then what is x2 of n? 3 power n to u of n. Okay. <clears throat> Now uh, we can use a convolution formula, convolution theorem also to find its z transform. So using convolution theorem, x1 of n convolution, x2 of n. Uh, what is its z transform? x1 of z into x2 of z. Okay. So apply inverse z transform. Apply inverse z transform on equation one. Okay. So equation one is this one. If you apply inverse z transform, x of z inverse transform is x of n. And x1 of z into x2 of z inverse transform is x1 of n convolution, x2 of n. So x1 of n already we have. And what is the formula for convolution we have? k equal to minus infinity to infinity k is a dummy variable like tau in case of continuous time domain signals x2 of n minus tau x1 of tau into x2 of t minus tau form is there okay so here k equal to minus infinity to infinity x1 of k means 
टू पवर के इंटू यू ऑफ के एक्स टू ऑफ एन माइनस के मीन थ्री पवर एन माइनस के इंटू यू ऑफ एन माइनस के ओके यू ऑफ के इंटू यू ऑफ एन माइनस के सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई दैट लिमिट विल बी फ्रॉम जीरो टू स्मॉल एंड यू विल गेट लाइक इन केस ऑफ कॉजल सिग्नल टू पवर के इंटू थ्री पवर एन इंटू थ्री पवर माइनस के सो नाउ अगेन यू कैन फर्दर वी नीड टू सिंप्लीफाई इट डिपेंडिंग ऑन वेटेज इधर वी कैन स्टॉप एट पर्टिकुलर कन्वल्यूशन सिंबल or we can further uh, we need to further solve the convolution also depending on weightage of the marks okay so actually here the output is a convolution between 2 power n into u of n into 3 power n into u of n so directly i am implementing the convolution formula okay so actually what is x1 of n into x1 x2 of n convolution in our problem 2 power n into u of n convolution 3 power n into u of n that we are implementing now okay next so let us continue this 3 power n we can write it outside because it is not depending on that 2 by 3 whole power k so here we need geometric progression formula like uh, we are having a series representation uh, n equal to 0 to small n r power n Uh, is equal to one minus r power n plus one by one minus r if r is less than one, and similarly sum of n equal to zero to n r power n equal to r power n plus one minus one by r minus one if r is greater than one. So this is applicable over here, isn't it? X of n equal to three power n into one minus r. R is less than one, so two by three whole power. In place of uh, uh, small n, we have here capital N is there. So n plus one, n plus one by one minus r. So further, we need to simplify this. This three is in the denominator. If we take it into numerator, three power n plus one, one minus two by three, whole power n plus one. So still, you can simplify it. Three power n plus one minus two power n plus one. If you multiply I into u of n, you can put over here. Because to indicate it is a causal sequence, okay. You just multiply three power n plus one inside three power n plus one, both will get cancelled into u of n. You will get okay. This is a convolution method, uh, uh, like how to use convolution method to find inverse Z transform. So like this, we have to solve convolution formula also here, okay. So let us go for uh, uh, next method now. So this is the final answer uh, for the given Z transform function. This is the inverse Z transform. Let us go for last method. Uh, <clears throat> residue method. To calculate uh, residues, so many processors are there. This in detail I'll cover in uh, some other lecture. But as of now, just a basic for a basic function, how to use this residue. method uh, or cauchy's integral theorem let us uh, see now with a simple example cauchy's integral theorem we are going to use here to solve the problems okay so let us see the first theoretical part like uh, what is this theorem and how to use it so actually till now i have not given you the formula to find the inverse z transform like reverse canon will be there right that standard formula i know i have not given you actually the original formula to find inverse z transform is 1 by 2 pi j over closed integration region of convergence x of z into z power n minus 1 dz. Okay, so from Cauchy's integral theorem, from Cauchy's integral theorem, this this is a closed integration. So from Cauchy's integration theorem, from Cauchy's integral theorem, the closed integration that means that is a 1 by 2 pi j integration x of z into z power n minus 1 dz. So from Cauchy's integration theorem, this particular integration is equal to sum of sum of sum of residues, sum of residues of residues of x of z into z power n minus one at Poles of x of z, which are inside the curve, 
here curve is a closed circle that is mod z greater than p sum of residues of x of z into z power n minus 1 at poles of x of z so for a causal sequence so sum of residues we have to take for a causal sequence if mod z is greater than p or was is greater than pole means sum of residues or minus sum of residues of x of z power n into at poles of x of z which are inside the curve if if mod z is less than p here if mod z is greater than p sum of that particular positive residue value we have to take if mod z less than p means minus residue we have to take so whether that particular pole corresponding roc is greater than its value or less than its value greater means sum of residues less than means minus sum of residues we have to take okay but how to calculate poles that is important okay uh, sorry how to calculate residues that is important this is just a definition this is standard formula to find inverse z transform and this is a from cauchy's integral theorem this closed integration is equal to sum of residues of this function at poles of x of z which are inside the curve if mod z is greater than p or minus sum of residues if mod z is less than p now let us see how to calculate poles I and mean, sorry residues put the heading calculation of residue at pole p okay so here residue at pole p residue at pole p equal to limit z tends to p z minus p into x of z into z power n minus this is a formula to find the residue of a particular pole value p z minus p into x of z into z power n minus using this we have to calculate residue after that sum of residues that is no need to solve that integration okay so you all you have to remember all this just to this formula residue at pole p first theoretical part you have to write next you can go for procedure by solving the problem also okay so let us see one example like uh, how to use this write down the problem <clears throat> determine determine inverse z transform using residue method okay using residue method for x of z equal to z by z minus 2 into z minus 3 if mod z is less than 2 mod z is less than 2 is given Okay. How many poles we have here? Two comma three. Okay. So first we need to calculate residues. Residue at pole P equal to two because less than two. Two is a circle. Pole is also in there on the circle. So we have to consider this pole. But P equal to three. Three is not there in the circle within the region of convergence region of convergence is less than 2 so this closed curve is not including this pole so don't consider residue of this particular pole which is outside the circle outside the closed path so only we need to calculate one residue at pole p equal to 2 what is that residue value limit z tends to p p value is 2 here z minus 2 into x of z into x of z given function into z power n minus 1 just now we discussed the formula right just a substitution of that so z minus 2 z minus 2 will get cancelled z equal to 2 you substitute 2 minus 3 into 2 power n minus 1 so minus 2 power n this is a residue so here less than 2 is given and the poles one pole is outside only two poles are there so two residues actually we have to calculate but no need to consider residue at pole 3 because this is outside the curve so now x of n from Cauchy's integral theorem, from Cauchy's integral, complete theory you have to write. As I already discussed theory, I'm not including it in the problem, just I'm telling you how to use that theorem. Okay, but in the exam, you need to present it very neatly. x of n equal to, from Cauchy's integral theorem, x of n equal to sum of 
minus sum of residues. Okay, minus sum of residues. In the minus sum, why minus sum of residues means minus mod that is less than two. Anti-causal. Anti-causal. Less than two means we have to take minus sum of residues. That means minus two power n. We can also include u of minus n minus one. That's it. This is the inverse Z transform for the given function based on Cauchy's integral theorem or residue method using residue method. Why I'm including this means which indicates that this is an anti-causal sequence. So for anti-causal, generally for signals, u of minus t we use, but for sequences, u of minus n minus one is a reference. For causal means u of n is a reference in case of sequences. So n equal to zero, we should not include both in a causal as well as anti-causal. It will be included only in causal by default. Anti-causal standard unit step sequence is u of minus n minus one. Okay. So like this, we have to use residue method. Uh, similarly, uh, please try to solve uh, this problem. Uh, and if you have any doubts, uh, can discuss. Try to solve. Try to find inverse Z transform for this. <clears throat> one minus four Z inverse, and the ROC is given as one is less than mod Z less than four. So here, you clearly, you can observe for this uh, two circles. We need to draw right uh, two circles. One circle with radius one, and one more circle with radius as four, and ROC is an angular ring between these two circles, right? So this is our region of convergence, two poles. For two poles, two residues we have to calculate here. Two residues, pole residue one at one, pole value as one. The second residue at pole value four. So mod Z is greater than one here. So this corresponding residue, positive residue, and mod Z is less than four. This corresponding residue minus sum of residue, positive residue minus residue. We value we have to include finally in x of n. Okay. After calculating residue greater than one means this corresponding pole residue plus value we have to take minus sum of residues. Now mod Z less than p means. So this corresponding pole value four. Residue negative of residue value we have to take including x of n. Okay, this is about Cauchy's integral theorem just for basic uh, function. Okay. So try to solve uh, refer at least to one more problem uh, based on this. Uh, if you have any doubts? Uh, we will discuss in next classes. Okay.